Hi guys, welcome to the channel of love. Okay, it's the first time I've spoken today, but I feel like there's an energy around me. In the space of about five minutes, I was put, putting on my makeup and I turned around as if someone was like, uh, like standing there watching me. But no one was there. Then I washed my hands, so I had my head down. And then again, I turned around, it was like, who's there? And then I went to make my coffee and I've done the same. I like, looked that direction. It was like, come on, why do I keep looking over my shoulder? But I don't feel like it's a bad vibe. I feel like, well, it's board meeting day. I think I've got feathers in there. Okay. Oh, click, click our fingers. Oh, what was that that just flew off my fingers? So I feel like there's a really nice energy that's around. Surveying. I don't know what they're doing. They're just like watching. <laughs> they're okay. It's harmless. So that's good. Um... I felt like when I was actually in the bathroom, I felt I would be using the Druid Craft Tarot. But I think we used them last time. So we're going to use the Witch's Tarot. I'm giggling because it's like, have you kind of ends of my body? <clears throat> my voice um, feels quite husky. Anyway, I thought I'd share that with you. This card here, I just kind of left its, uh, its centre. If you have a look at the cards in here, and like in the centre. Uh, compartments and this car just like skid done a little skid so we'll have a look at it what is it it is the seven of pentacles what do you think he's thinking about is he at the meeting we'll, we'll soon find out elbow he could be sitting next to me Ah, oh, then that would be Aries or Gemini. Feels, I actually felt that it was a masculine energy, divine masculine, which is the Aries energy, the Emperor. Sitting next to me, okay. Give him a little nudge. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so, let's use the Witch's Tarot. The cards actually feel quite balanced. The weight of the cards... They're not too light, they're not too heavy. Hold on, they're getting heavier now. Come on. Wakey, wakey, rise and shine. Let's grab yourself a cup of sunshine. Everyone grab your coffee. <laughs> the meeting's about to commence. Take your seats now. Awesome. Okay, let's check out the energies of these as they're taking their seats. Aries, <clears throat> heartbroken, they're at a loss, Aries, Taurus, well, you're sitting in your rightful place, you're the high front, the high priest, okay, you're fine, you're connected, Taurus, it's okay, you're uh, tuned in, Gemini, uh, you're thinking that things are quite funny, I don't know, you're finding the humour in everything, um, it feels like you've got a bit of a dirty mind, so I don't know, it's like, um, you're bringing the humour to the party today. Good for you, Gemini. Balancing out the scales there with your love. Okay. Cancer. Cancer's a bit quiet. Did Cancer come back? Because they left. Cancer's not here. Will we be getting a replacement? Um, yeah, there's a. I feel like there's a new trainee in Cancer's position. <laughs> this is the student, the card that studies. It's a feminine energy. So there's. Oh, I feel like okay, foreign exchange student. Just pay attention to what's coming to Cancer's energy because that's changed. A foreign exchange student. Is sitting in Cancer's position. Okay. Leo. You've been sitting there, haven't you, Leo, the whole time? You were the first one to take your seat. Yeah. <laughs> Watching it all go on. Memories of love, but I felt like um, seeing the innocence within people. Oh, okay, that's nice. Okay. Taurus, me. I've got. 
the mopa sitting next to me. What's that? It's like a, it looks like a feather. Can you see it now? I just looked a minute ago, but I couldn't see anything. Little birdie outside chirping. So I actually feel, you know when there's someone new on the team, you try to make them feel welcome, don't you? Like you have a chat with them, a bit of banter. You lighten up the energy. So Taurus, you're going to have to keep like Mr. Emperor, okay, down there because the guys up the top end of the, top, of the table here is um, Gemini, keeping the balance, finding the humour in it all. Okay, we've got the new foreign exchange student and then we have Leo, who I believe has probably been talking about um, how things operate, giving them the lowdown on the situation. So going over kind of um, the dynamics of the team, um, I'm not sure if they're actually going to speak about the past person who they've replaced. It's It feels like it's a nice energy that's coming in, apart from the masculine energy with Aries. So, Leo, good for you. Making this person feel um, welcoming. Uh, also, there could be some training going on. That might be why Leo's sitting down, because this person might get some training before the meeting. Normally happens like that. Okay, <laughs> coming a bit earlier. We'll have a chat before the meeting, perfect time. Got to come in anyway, that kind of thing. Okay, so um, Leo, who's on the other side of you? We all have Virgo the other side of you. Virgo sends their apologies. It's like Virgo's not here today. Okay. But you can send them notes. So they're tired, look, the fairies, drained out. So Virgo's not here today. Rightio then. Libra. Libra's not happy because they've been put opposite. Aries. They get to hear all about it. Read all about it. It could be passing notes. It's a, it's a conflicting energy uh, between both of them. There's some tension there. Okay. There's some tension between Aries and Libra. Taurus, why are your cards upside down? Who's opposite you at Scorpio? Okay. I actually felt as Taurus, I was sitting like in Scorpio's place and Scorpio was sitting where Taurus is because it's like I'm, I should be on that side of the table by this layout. It's like, why am I sitting over here? <laughs> um, so I'll, I'll move that. I'll show you. Look, see what I mean. Here's Taurus. Okay. Um, let's move these. There we go. This is a table layout. But Taurus here are pointing up. So I think I can put Taurus here. Why? Because they can keep an eye on what Aries is doing. So Scorpio, what energy are you in? Because apparently you've said you'll swap places, okay? You want to keep... Taurus wants to keep an eye on Aries. Um, because there's conflict here. So Taurus may be able to help calm down. Libra, bring the balance in. Scorpio. Because down this end of the table, it's not great. So you're swapping places with Taurus because it seems that you might be able to help this masculine energy more than what Taurus can. Yeah, <laughs> what's going on here? You get to choose your own seat. Let's swap seats. Why? Because, have a look, you've got the seven of, um, of cups here, the magician. Right, okay. Right, let me come back up. Now, inside those cups are all good things. Good thing. Where have you gone? Or where have you been? Maybe. Good thing. You've been gone too long. So, Scorpio, you're actually like, it looks like you're the magician. So, if you sit next door to Aries, it's like you're going to help them to see the good things in life. The good life. Good life, good life. Good life, good life in the good life, good life. Well, Taurus most definitely thinks this is a good move. You should sit next to Aries. Taurus can observe that way. You can give the nudges to Aries when it's needed. <clears throat> That's just the way it is. Okay. 
And then you have the Tower one with the High Priest. So Taurus will deal with this Tower moment. This side, Scorpio, you deal with the Heartbreak, your side. Okay, it's like you're more qualified to sit next to that person today. Right then, Sagittarius. Hi, hi, just got here. Hi, it's all right, you haven't missed anything. Just changing the seating arrangement. Sit down. It's like, why am I sitting next to you? Hi, hi. But um, it looks like they haven't actually quite realised yet. Okay, Sagittarius, you haven't realised that you're sitting next to Taurus yet because you're too busy going, hi, I think to the new person. Okay, because you're looking the other way. So you're looking at Capricorn. That's the devil energy with this little grin. I feel like Leo saying to this uh, this newbie, they're always like, don't worry. <laughs> but here, <clears throat> they've always been on some adventure. Okay, well Capricorn, let's have a look. Yeah, all happy. I've got some good news. Sagittarius got some good news to tell Capricorn. Or wants to ask about something. Something that's going on at home. Okay. That's a nice energy. So down this energy, it's very, well, actually it's a very mentoring energy. Right, let's carry on because we've got Aquarius and Pisces. And I feel like there may be just... Well, at the moment, there's three people that are kind of vacant. They're vacant. I just want to say that. They're absent. Um, like kind of from the meeting. They've got other stuff going on. Aquarius. Aquarius, okay. Let me just think about that a bit more. I feel like Aquarius might have some things on their mind as well regarding their money and their children. Pisces, let's finish off the read. The reading. <laughs> Pisces will finish off the reading with the High Priestess. Interesting because Pisces and Taurus are coming up as. Um, they're chairing the meeting. Okay. But there's a lot of everyone stepping into their own leadership. You have Scorpio who's helping Aries. You have um, Gemini and Leo who is helping Cancer. Uh, you have Virgo. Virgo's just, they're just connect. They're just drained. They just can't do it today. But they are connected. So not to worry, they're just having a day off. I feel like the last meeting had a knock-on effect with them, so. And then we have Taurus, who's keeping an eye on uh, Aries and um, Libra. But really, Taurus has really asked Scorpio to step in and deal with Aries. In comes Sagittarius, giggly, a little bit late, wanting to speak to Capricorn about something to do with the home, the children, how did something work out. So I imagine they may have of advise them they want them to know how it went um, and then we have a Aquarius they seem to be I don't know maybe they overhear the conversation and it gets them thinking about their home life that's what I'm feeling and then we have Pisces with the um, the high priest high priestess and the high priest Okay, so the two most um, connected energies on the table. Right then. Wow. What's the underlying energy or the reason behind this coming together? Because this is about helping us to move on to karma times. The moving on card. Letting down our guards. Let's read this energy. The Six of Swords. A young man sits in the back of a small wooden boat. His muscular arms are bare. He wears a soft purple vest and grey pants as he paddles his way across the water towards a distant, a distant shore. In the distance, surrounding the lake, you can see mountains. A breeze blows his brown hair back from his face and we can just see a bit of his right profile. The man is content and concentrating upon his journey. To link this card further to the element of air, 
there is a dragonfly motive along the sides of the yellow boat. Inside the wooden boat are six swords standing up, point down and arranged neatly in front of him. The swords are not damaging the boat, perhaps they are plugging up the holes. These swords represent that even though you carry your troubles and concerns with you, you do not have to be weighed down by them. The blue skies and clear horizon indicate that this is a good time for travel. I decided to read it without holding it up so you could let your imagination kind of see the picture, even though I had given you a glimpse of it. So traditionally, when the Six of Swords sails into a reading, it means travel over water. Oh, what's coming through is bridge. Bridge over troubled waters. Um, and the help and the support, especially within uh, this reading. Today it shows movement and progress of any kind. The Quarants may be planning a trip for pleasure or business. This card signif signifies that it is a good time for movement, change and the experience that travel brings. Expect forward movement, improvements to the current situation, a new job, moving to a new home and of course, travel for pleasure. Enjoy the journey. There is smooth sailing ahead. Wow. Okay. So, should we have a look at these conversations? We can split these up. Um, I do feel as if the Two of Swords and, let me show you again, I feel to keep these two together because they're both about tapping into your intuition. So let's keep this message together. I honestly believe that these three should go together. And these three should go together. And then we'll have this four. <sighs> That's going on over here. Okay. They're all squares. They're all square pegs. Trying to be, they've been trying to pound themselves into round holes. It doesn't work like that, does it? It's painful. <laughs> so, let's, um, let's start with the newcomer. Hello, newcomer. Sitting in Cancer's position. So, we've got a jolly um, Gemini here. And uh, there is a new feminine energy that's on the scene. Um, and we have Leo, who is taking care of her, showing her the ropes. Well, let us, um, let's go to the journey of love. I want to see <laughs> what they're, ad they're advising. So we have Gemini, Cancer, and Leo. These three energies are together. What are they talking about? The energy feels good. It feels really supportive and humorous. Um, Angel of Jupiter, Awaken, card number six. Well, that's a number of love. Let's see what they're chatting about. So, this is what they're telling the newbie. Beloved, within you there is magnificence, greatness and the ability to live bolder, larger and more exuberantly than you may have ever imagined. I'm going to hold the card down. It's very, well actually, I've put it over, this is Leo speaking, because of the greenness. Okay. So it's like Gemini's listening, and it's like boosting uh, Gemini up, listening to Leo talk to Cancer. So, this is Leo saying to Cancer, Beloved, within you there is magnificence, greatness, and the ability to live bolder, larger, and more exuberantly than you may have ever imagined. Awaken that keen spirit, hungry for adventure and new experience. 
The angel of Jupiter, the spirit of bold expansion and divine generosity, lives within you. Your spirit cannot be made small, but must be free. Start now. Feel the endlessness of your own heart. What can be done today to live bigger? A smile, a yes to that offer of adventure, sharing the vulnerability without fear. Taking a step forward into the unknown. Daring to imagine that the divine doesn't just happen to you, but happens through you, as you. Embrace the courage of your own open heart and dare to dream, beloved. The bold divine nature within you is calling you to great things. Now is your time to awaken. This oracle holds a message of guidance for you. You are being given an opportunity that can change your life. Don't hesitate to accept it. If you are acting with more assertiveness, more generosity, more playfulness and more spiritual authority than usual, this is confirmation that this is coming from a genuine place within you. If you are experiencing some havoc in your life or a sense that things are changing, this oracle comes as affirmation. Yes, there is change and yes, you are outgrowing what once was. So you will be prepared to receive that which is more suited for your next stage of growth. Wow. I don't feel like I'm going to read the poem. Let's not read the poem. Okay. So Cancer, it's time for you to awaken. That's what they're really saying. Okay, it's your time now. Dare to dream. Dare to live. Okay. Do we want to carry on with this one? Now let's listen to the conversation on the other side of the table. Page of Wands, Sagittarius, says hi to Capricorn because apparently something happened last meeting and they want to find out what's occurred. This has got Aquarius. Aquarius is listening in on the conversation. Let's see what's going on. There's something about the dynamics of the home life. It was like a top tip that Sagittarius gave Capricorn and, uh, well, it's got Aquarius thinking now whether or not they should maybe try this method. Sweet soul rising. Sweet Jesus. That's what was coming out. It was like, so it, it looks like it worked. The guidance that was given, it worked. You may, feel, you may feel lost in your own thoughts and feelings. Feel like this is for Aquarius. This is the sweetness of surrender into another world. It's a time to dream, to wonder. Not to be clear and sharp right now at this precise moment. If you have a clear plan, let it become soft and feel your heart open to allowing, allowing whatever may be. We might believe that it is through tough action and dynamic assertiveness that we make our way through the world, yet sometimes the sweetness of the soul rises and instead we can flow gently with the currents of the cosmic ocean, unsure of where we are headed, but safe in the truth that all waters naturally return to the ocean, where they are all wanting to go eventually anyway. You can use your own efforts to swim to your destination against the current at times, or you can float on the sweet love of your own soul as it enjoys the privilege of getting to know itself as one with the divine. Okay, so this is kind of like the conversation that occurred last week between these two. Some guidance. I feel like Capricorn's taking it on, taking on love's way. Okay, is Aquarius going to give this a go? Will it bring in the balance to their life? This oracle brings you guidance now, surrender and flow. This is not the time to assert your will and try to make things happen, no matter how much you may want to or believe that you should. There is something bigger happening and everything is going to turn out perfectly according to a far larger plan and that includes your well-being too, beloved. Sometimes we have to let go of our expectations about how that bigger plan will be achieved and just let it happen. Trusting that it will actually take place even without us striving to make it so. And this is one of those times. And my ears are ringing. 
we've got to go over to the table. I don't know what's going on over here. It feels a bit unsettled. Disagreement's going on. Right then, you lot. <laughs> what's going on? Okay, Scorpio, tell me what's going on. Because the Hierophant's pointing up to you. Why? It's like you're pointing. I'm not sure if you're saying they did it. Okay, I'm not. Let's have a look. Scorpio, what's going on? Sacred Convergence. 28. What's going on over there? There is a coming together happening within your body and soul, a unification of all that is within you. This is akin to travelling to a strange land, as all sorts of new sensations, not all welcome at first, begin to make themselves known to you. If you are experiencing discomfort within your own body, or uncertainty in a sense of expansion, to include more of life in your thoughts and feelings, then you are conscious of this sacred convergence. Why did you just turn my page? Ethereal touch, okay? <laughs> If you are sensitive, oh, we've just missed a sentence, let's go back. If you are experiencing discomfort within your own body or uncertainty in a sense of expansion to include more of life in your thoughts and feelings, then you are conscious of this sacred, sacred convergence. The bit I missed was, it is like two worlds or more colliding. If you are sensitive, you will feel it happening as an important event without necessarily having a physical situation to attribute the experience to, or upon which to hang an explanation. I feel this is where Scorpio's coming in. They're kind, they're kind of like trying to explain the situation to ones that are not really getting it. Okay, to so the sensitive souls. You may also be encountering this in a very physical sense by finding yourself in situations which you previously would have avoided. As soon as you will swap seats now. Okay. You will be meeting people and thrown into a relationship with them, apparently more by circumstance than by your own conscious choosing. This is a meeting of you with your shadow and something to rejoice in, even if it is uncomfortable at times. So they're feeling really uncomfortable because not just that, but it's quite obvious that positions have been swapped and that something is going on down this end for Aries and Libra. That um, Scorpio and Taurus is bringing into balance. This is a meeting of you with your shadow and something to rejoice in, even if it is uncomfortable at times. Be gentle and loving with yourself and kindly seek to find the beauty in what you are learning about yourself in your interactions and experiences. I feel like you're perfect. You're the perfect souls for the job because it goes on to say you are a wise soul seeking to know yourself rather than judge others. Remember your divine perfection as you are thrilled and challenged in this time of great growth. You are guided to be curious, as though travelling to a foreign land and remaining open to experiencing its treasures. So I'm actually feeling like the conversation here needs to be, guys, come on, there's a new person in town. It's like, let's be curious, let's, you know, let's not do this. Harmony needs to be restored. This oracle holds a message for you. A deeper part of yourself is calling you forward. Any discontent, struggle, anxiety or fear is a subconscious recognition of this. Don't worry, you are a unique plant in the divine garden. You don't have to know what plant you are in order to grow. You just need to live each day and the growth happens naturally. <clears throat> then you can see over time the beauty of your true nature revealing itself to you. It will be a revelation to be relished. Okay. Then I kind of feel they tell him to hush. <laughs> it's like, do they not get a say here? No, because it's a coming together. Okay. And it feels uncomfortable. So let's just leave these guys to rest just for a moment. Hey, let's go over to Pisces. Pisces. It's nearly your month. How are you doing? Do you have plans for your birthday? Your birthday month? The breaking. What's going on over here? You have to kind of remember that on the table you're meant to be kind of like sitting opposite the person that will 
support you as in partnerships. So seeing as we have the breaking between the High Priestess and the Two of Swords, it might explain why Virgo is missing. I'm not sure what's gone on. So let's see what kind of guidance, because I feel actually that uh, Pisces actually has guidance for everyone. They got, they kind of ended the reading, I said. So, um, the breaking. You are breaking apart. <laughs> Look at you all. <laughs> We're meant to be coming together. Uh, there is a coming together. <laughs> That's what um, Scorpio and Taurus it's like. Listen, nothing's out of alignment. Just carry on. <clears throat> you are breaking apart. You might not understand it at all. There is not much. There is not much. There is not so much to be understood. But the simplicity doesn't mean it is easy to endure. You may worry that you are going too far. That you may not recover or ever come back together again. But what can you do? Can you hold back from the divine love that calls you, that, lure, that lures you into becoming all that you are? And that, that's kind of explaining what I said, that your um, opposite, that's what they inspire you to do. That's what you inspire each other to do. So let's read this. You are breaking apart. You might not understand it at all. There is not so much to be understood, but the simplicity doesn't mean it is easy to endure. You may worry that you are going too far, that you may not recover or ever come back together again. But what can you do? Can you hold back from the divine love that calls you, that lures you into becoming all that you are, to remembering your divine nature? Well, you could try, but, but for what purpose? Temporary rest before the storm at best. So take the rest if you need it. Are you talking to Virgo? <laughs> Take the rest if you need it, then dive into the storm. Let yourself be broken hearted by the divine so that you can become your truth, become all that you are meant to be. It is better to have the heart broken so that it grows than to be broken hearted by thinking that you must protect yourself from love. This oracle brings compassionate guidance that no matter what sadness or anger, despair or frustration you may feel, you are being pulled apart, not by dark forces, but by the loving embrace of the divine, as it strips you of that which would keep you from your divine realisation. Let go and break. It is going to be the making of you. Okay, we can read the poem. Love. Let's talk about love. Love is a special closeness that sings from the heart, that warms my days and nights, that feels good that makes me smile, that makes me glad to be alive. Guess what's next? 66. Clickety-click, 66, coming together. Now, I feel the Mother Mary presence around, so we shall have a, uh, a final message from the Mother Mary. I've got to look at the bottom of the deck first. To go with this Six of Swords. Oh, the Ace of Swords is after, which is the resurrection. We're soaring, flying. What's that, like your club song? <laughs> okay. Bit of high school musical. <laughs> What's the bottom of the deck here? She loves. She loves. So let's leave with the... Um... Okay, we'll read it. <laughs> She loves. And then we had the six of uh, swords. Moving on from challenging times. Let's read about how she loves. Card number 61. Doing that thing when I'm looking up again. Forgiveness is here for you now. Can you partake of it? Forgiveness for your own self, for the times you messed up, you didn't love, you forgot to trust, tried to take over and decided against surrender. Forgiveness is here for you now, for the times when you couldn't forgive another, 
even if you really tried and really wanted to. She loves. She is here for you now. Open your heart to the angel goddess of forgiveness and let her fill your heart. You are free. You're all free to go. You don't have to stay. You will though. This oracle brings you a message from the divine. You are forgiven. You are worthy of forgiveness and you are capable of great spiritual generosity in forgiving others. If there is a person that you cannot forgive, you are really just not forgiving yourself. Perhaps for being vulnerable, for not knowing better, or for not listening to your own intuition. It's time to let that go and allow the forgiveness that the divine has for you to fill your heart. You are free now. You just need to realise it. You're going to do the poem? Yes. The cherry blossom knows when to bloom each year and never questions whether its beauty is enough. There is peace in knowing you always bloom well, yet man spends a lifetime in wonder. Mother Mary. <clears throat> Very interesting board meeting today. Oh. Felt like it was coming apart, but it looks like the Mother Mary's going to bring all this together. We've got it. Our Lady of Soul Birth. I'm not even sure if I've had this card before. It's not looking, it's not sounding familiar either. Card number five. Bring me sunshine. At the beginning of the book, Lucy. So before we leave this meeting, let's end with the Mother Mary's message. You and I have never been separated, though you may fear it to be so, my beloved one. Yet, as you grow, I grow. As you suffer, I suffer. As you celebrate, I celebrate. When you rage and grieve, so too do I rage and grieve. Your journey upon this planet is held within my loving embrace and is my journey too. Can you see why you need to kind of get on with your opposite? I don't know what's going on with that bit of hair. Okay. Settle down now, settle down. Getting restless now. Your journey upon this planet is held within my love and embrace and is my journey too. I am with you always. We cannot be parted. I accept all parts of you and all parts of your journey. There is nothing to hide from me for I am in your life with you. When you reject parts of yourself, you reject me. And when you love yourself, you love me. Love me, dear one. Love yourself and your radiant soul grows into life, into light upon the earth. The journey of the soul is a gritty one. It entails encounters with realms of light, with pure love and heavenly rapture. It also entails encounters with negativity, fear, doubt, shame, guilt, grief, anger and suffering. Such is the mysterious experience of being a divine human in the making. We encounter bliss and despair in order to become whole. It is through our wholeness that we are capable of allowing the divine presence to manifest through us as it wishes to, according to a higher plan. The more open we are to life with acceptance, especially when we don't understand it, the more we allow our soul to lead us through life into our divine destiny. When our soul leads us, we avoid the obstacles created by our mind. With the mind's tendencies to reject and judge, we would inhibit the following assistance of our soul. The Heavenly Mother wants your soul to blossom. Like that cherry blossom. 
children. The Heavenly Mother wants your soul to blossom, understanding that it is the lotus flower that is fed by mud, and that this is just the nature of being a divine, soulful human. The Mother is not interested in perfection. She is interested in love. That is her way. She knows that the dark and the light are in sacred play upon the earth, and that the divine presence is in all things. It is not only within the light, but also even within the greatest darkness, though it may be, it may seem harder to find them. She understands that to grow and blossom, the soul needs honesty more than it needs pleasantness. She understands that we need the light of joy and also the darkness of anger, rage, grief and sadness channeled into healing consciousness so that we can grow and become all that we can possibly be. She understands, that, <clears throat> she understands that becoming a divinely awakened human being is a raw, wild and beautiful path, often with great suffering, and she, and she feels great compassion. So she empowers us, through her wisdom, to take the journey with a fearless faith in her divine protection and guidance when we are in need. The mother wants to experience her divine children as succeeding in their spiritual destiny. This requires an acceptance even, <clears throat> even. This requires an acceptance even of the emotions that may not seem spiritual at first and of the life experiences that seem to be challenging and take us into darker unknown territory. When we understand that the divine is in all experiences and we draw to us what we need when we need it and that the divine mother protects us whenever we call upon her, we can trust. We might not always understand but we can still choose to trust. Through understanding her teachings of the necessity of light and dark for the heart to become truly powerful, we can accept ourselves and our lives more readily and in doing so, our soul begins to open up. Our heart becomes powerful. When we can learn to love more completely, starting with ourselves, we become capable of being instruments for her love in the world in other ways, through our relationships, our passions and interests, our chosen professions, and how we live from day to day. When the soul is allowed to live, rather than the mind trying to squash it down, and only allow the logical, understandable parts to see the light of day, miracles can occur. As the heart opens to life without restraint, the miraculous love of the mother can flow through us. We become instruments of her grace. This oracle comes with a special message for you. Somewhere in your life, in your relationships or within you, you have been holding back. You have been doing so because you were worried that what you wanted to come out was not acceptable. Oh, what you wanted to come out. Okay. You have been... Let's just start again, because if I start... start... This oracle comes with a special message for you. Somewhere in your life, in your relationships, or within yourself, you have been holding back. You have been doing so because you were worried that what wanted to come out was not acceptable, or that you would be shamed. Mother Mary tells you that she loves you and wants you to blossom. Don't try to stop the flow of love. Allow yourself to take the steps forward that you have been questioning and don't be afraid, beloved. There is only your great connection to the Holy Mother to discover and your own soul to grow. The Holy Mother is within you, is within your soul that longs for divine fulfilment. You have her permission to discover and be yourself completely and freely. Do not hide yourself away, even from the darkness. There is nothing to fear. There is only love that is growing. At the end there, I just realised it's my, it's my mum's birthday today. Happy birthday, mummy. 85, I believe, she would have been. Um, I think so. <laughs> Anyway, so yes, mummy's love is around. How beautiful. 
Right, um, there, there it is, meeting's over. 45 minutes, that's good isn't it? Three quarters of an hour for a reading. Okay guys, I will catch up with you soon. If you'd like to book yourself in a reading, then details are in the description box. And until next time, bye for now, much love.